Issue 39 The minute I saw the title image of the story, I immediately lost the motivation to read it as soon as possible because I remembered what it was all about. I saw videos on the story arc and it's depressing as shit. Remember how he said I hated the Sonic gets amnesia and turns on his friends story arc because it was too depressing seeing Sonic in such huge trouble with his friends? Well, that's basically what's going to happen again. Only this time, it's stretched out for like three issues! I actually took a break from reviewing one comic every day just because I wasn't looking forward to the story arc. I never did that for the infamous Sally miniseries or the Tails and Knuckles miniseries. In fact, I read all of the Knuckles miniseries in one day. I guess what this means is that I would rather read a bad story than a depressing story. I care about these characters, so naturally I don't want to see them in overly depressing situations. I guess I care more about the tone not being too overly grim dark than I care about whether the story is good or bad, because at least with a bad story I can enjoy ripping into it. But a depressing story just isn't fun for me to read, no matter how well written it is otherwise. In fact, I would rather read all three of the infamous miniseries back to back than start reading this story arc right now. I have a lot more fun, especially since the Sally miniseries has a sort of rewatch bonus once you reread it knowing all the hints that it's not the real Sally. But I had to force myself to start this anyways. So for the sake of my motivation, the backup story of all things was the first thing in the issue that I tried to read. Or at least I tried to, but for what seems like the first time ever, there wasn't one. The entirety of issue 39 consists of this depressing story with nothing lighthearted to cheer you up. It's times like this where I kind of wish I was sadistic because then I'd actually enjoy watching Sonic suffer in the story. But since I'm not, there's no appeal. Even with me knowing he'll be alright afterwards. But whatever, no more stalling, let's just get into this. We start out with all the Freedom Fighters scolding Sonic for a plan he's trying to come up with that's too risky, with all of them saying no because that's democracy in action. You know, it's really weird to see a princess of all be friends. And Antoine complains about how Sonic's going to a Sonic spin of a temper tantrum. Hey, better he express his anger that way than by inconveniencing you. Sonic says any fool can see that his plan is perfect, and I like how it's kind of lampshaded how ridiculous Sally supporting democracy is by having her get offended by the fool remark and say that if he's not careful, he'll see monarchy in action. Not that it would matter, since everyone else is already against the plan. So even if she alone rejected the plan, ignoring everyone else, she'd still be doing what the majority wants. So we're saying that it's kind of pointless. Sonic's plan is that they let Eggman roboticize Sonic and use one of Rotor's narrow overriders to let his mind be free. With Sonic in that position as Sally, the effects on Eggman could be even more devastating because he's way more powerful than she is. Sonic's basically saying he loves Sally's plan to do the same thing and thinks it just failed because of bad luck. I understand why Sonic's so excited. Problem is, he's indeed taking a really big risk here, trying to do the same plan that failed horribly again. And this time, when none of his friends have access to a convenient de-roboticizer. Hey, that's another thing! I can't believe I forgot to mention it in the Fall of Robotropolis story, but Eggman shouldn't have even had a giant de-roboticizer in his base to begin with. That was really stupidly plot convenient. I could understand if they reverse engineered a de-roboticizer from Uncle Chuck stealing the roboticizer in Eggman's base. But him outright having a de-roboticizer, something that would thwart his plans, is stupid. I guess I didn't notice it because it was a big milestone, so it made sense. But anyways, there's no reason Snively wouldn't be able to find Sonic's narrow overrider just like he did with Sally, depending on how thorough his searching of him would be. Sonic's not saying, keep the Neuro World Rider in my tooth so that no one would be able to see and remove it. So if the plan is to keep it in the same place as Sally did, then it's just going to backfire horribly like it did before. And this time without a portable de-roboticizer and Dulcie the Duke's Ex Machina to save the day. He's showing an inability to learn from the failures of the previous plan, an inability to learn from everyone's mistakes. They should have used that portable de-roboticizer and replicated technology somehow to make millions of them, but instead, they wasted all of his juice because the risky plan screwed up. Basically, Sonic is getting all caught up in a potential perfect plan that's way too risky and putting his head in the clouds and not explaining how he could do things differently so that it wouldn't fail again. Makes sense for his character. Also, it really strikes me as weird that in a world where roboticization is seen as the worst thing ever, 
And where even Uncle Chuck, after regaining his free will, still has people really wanting to return to flesh and blood? That Sonic would actually want to become a robot, even if temporarily. You'd think you'd be seen as the ultimate terrible thing for him that he'd never want to experience. I guess that's just showing him how brave he is, and how he doesn't think ahead. Anyone else would refuse to try this plan, except Sally and him, because both of them are brave and don't want to look weak. They both have a rash, bullheaded streak to them, but Sally is more cautious. I don't see what Bunny's point was in pointlessly adding that, basically, Egghead may be a cyborg, remember? Now I have experience with this. No, you fucking don't. You don't have your entire body a robot, and you've never lost your free will, and you've never been in Sally's position trying out her plan. If her point was that she's suddenly, just now, started not appreciating her cyborg parts and having angst about them, then she should have been allowed to finish her sentence, and again, that has nothing to do with anything, because it's not like Sonic would keep having robot parts after he'd get himself de-roboticized. True, Uncle Chuck destroyed the de-roboticizer in an explosion, but if Eggman was stupid enough to make two things that could get a robot to being flesh and blood again, all they'd have to do is wait. And Sonic's not really the type to angst over being temporarily made of metal like Bunny would. I don't think so anyways. I picture him as being really optimistic. So Bunny saying this is just her shoving her issues in a situation where it doesn't belong just to have an excuse to complain. Which makes sense for people with angst. I like her, she's inoffensive enough, but that's what she's doing! And this never pointed out that this has nothing to do with anything. So after all of it is said and done, so Sonic gets the point that his plan was rejected by everyone and drops it, leaving for the weight room and not hole to blow off some steam. Because lifting heavy weights is totally a way to blow off steam instead of being stressed out, and totally something that Sonic would do, instead of, you know, Knuckles. It makes sense that Antoine doesn't have faith that Sonic will go along with his friends have ordered after all the times that Sonic's treated him like dirt early in the comic. He has every reason for bias and resentment and doubting his reliability, because if out of all his friends, he's the one who's seen the worst in him. But seeing Sally insist that he's not disloyal, as if she has the most faith in his loyalty, made me pretty skeptical. Considering all the times she's shown a lack of faith in Sonic's morality herself before this point. If anything, I'd say she's the one, aside from Antoine, with the least faith in him. Remember the time the Freedom Fighters were trapped in a simulation? And Sally didn't have faith in Sonic to not stay in the simulation forever? It's almost as if she's overcompensating for her paranoia of him by overstating the opposite, trying too hard. A sort of reaction formation defense mechanism. Also, her use of the word disloyalty bothers me. That's a bit of an exaggeration, isn't it? Even if Sonic was going to carry out the plan anyways, that wouldn't be disloyalty at all. Because he wouldn't be intentionally trying to inconvenience his friends, which is a textbook definition of betrayal. He'd be trying to help them. And sure, he'd be doing something he was told not to, but it's to try to help them. Which any logical person would be able to see is not the act of a traitor. If that's her twisted idea of disloyalty, maybe that explains her paranoia. I bet Eggman has the same approach where he punishes and hates on working for him for carrying out a plan he said not to do, even if it benefits him in the end, purely because they dared to do something the King of Control Freaks told them not to do. I can understand he'd get in trouble for not being trustworthy to not carry out a plan he's told not to do, and therefore being disobedient. But the sheer fact that he wants to help them makes calling him disloyal and a traitor an idiotic lie. If he really was disloyal, he would have inconvenienced them. You know, like slapped Antoine for annoying him at the very least. And, but, like, back to Sally. So is she the type of person who would think that it's disloyal to, say, like, what if she got this... What if she got addicted to drugs, and her friends had to take her to a rehabilitation center? Would she call it disloyal and a betrayal for them taking her to a place she doesn't want to go? Would she want to have them court-martialed for that? Sonic leaves, but unfortunately, Fang the Sniper shows up, revealing how fast he leaves. He had apparently been put in Nuthole Prison since the last time he was seen, but escaped. You know, the revelation that he escaped from prison would have been more surprising and impactful if we had actually known that he was supposed to be in there to begin with. A prison break like this was at least slightly foreshadowed by us seeing the prison earlier for the first time ever, but it wasn't damaged or anything. So this really does come out of nowhere, 
Combined with Sonic's fate after this, it feels like a major diabolical ex machina. Fan brags about how the flimsy looking antiquated prison wasn't good enough to hold him for long, allowing him to escape. This would have never happened if they had the sense to just kill him instead of wasting Nothole's precious refugee resources on keeping prisoners alive. Aren't there more important things for them to worry about? But because they kept him alive and a Nothole, Fang had escaped from prison and knocked Sonic out again to get him turned into Robot Eggman's orders, doing something that would get Sonic framed for trying to carry out a plan he wasn't going to. Even though you'd think it'd be obvious to everyone that he wouldn't get himself roboticized without getting one of Rota's neural things first, so all they'd have to do to prove Sonic's innocence is count the amount of neural things and see that it's the same amount as before. Or I guess Rota wants to keep in track of how many exactly he had, so that wouldn't work. But they don't even mention that possibility. You know what sucks? If Sonic had gone through with disloyalty according to Sally and carried out his plan, Things would have turned out much better for everyone. He'd have had the neural overrider on when being roboticized, or when Fang had captured him to make it easier for him. So while Sonic's going to be on trial later for carrying out his plan, things would have gone much better if he actually had done that. And yet nobody acknowledges this, and he's going to be treated like the villain for it. Another thing about those neural overriders. Why doesn't everyone wear them all the time just in case they get roboticized? Rotor has multiple of them. He can make more. Why wasn't Sonic wearing one already just in case? So yeah, Fang gets Sonic turned into a robot because bullshit and because Eggman told him to. And his reward for bringing him there is being allowed to leave without being roboticized. Why the hell would Eggman even do that? Fang wanting money and not getting it makes sense. Although he was ridiculously stupid to expect to get some from Eggman, and again I'm not sure who'd accept money from him. But why would Eggman be nice enough to not roboticize him along with him? And after insulting his robot at that, he's wasting a perfectly good robot slave, isn't he? Plus it would have been great karma for Fang. Eggman says he'll go straight to roboticizing Sonic without making big speeches or anything, and that he upgraded his roboticizer to remove even more free will because apparently they didn't remove enough the last time. So here we go, into grim dark territory. This issue is torture from this point on. And of course, Nicole the Magic Wand psychically knows that the robot Sonic is actually Sonic the Hedgehog, even though there should be no trace of his DNA because he's made of metal and oil now. The worst part is they didn't even need to know that it was really Sonic right now. They could have been told that much later by a gloating Eggman, only, and only then realized they needed to try to de-roboticize him and not outright kill him. But it's like, in this issue, they just spend the whole time fighting him anyways, so it would have been much less depressing if they never knew it was actually Sonic to begin with. I do like that Nicole can create distracting holograms in the Freedom Fighters, though. This is something that makes sense that she can do. Then Bunny fights him, including having a shield up conveniently, which is cool. And I like how they actually bothered to explain that these are all new gadgets Rotor added to Bunny, so it feels a little less overpowered and out of nowhere. It's nice that Bunny's being allowed to be badass for once, but I'm not enjoying this because it's obvious she's not going to be allowed to win, and she's just going to be struck down effortlessly. Not to mention I'm hating the situation too much to get any sort of enjoyment out of her fighting. Sally's so saying Phase 2 and Phase 3 and stuff implies that she already made concrete plans for this exact situation, that she's smart enough to plan ahead for everything. It's nice that Tails has contacted and told you something important, and that he says he's happy to be treated like more of an adult, making reference to the Tails miniseries so they haven't forgotten it. I like that Sally immediately reveals that she hasn't forgotten he's a kid right after that, scolding him like a nagging mother, because I don't think Tails at this point is competent enough to deserve being treated like an adult yet. Not to mention that if he was, what would be the point of making him a kid? Might as well make him the same age as everybody else. Eggman is told about Bunny and plans to make a hard-to-build device that would transmit a surge through Sonic into her. That's the defeats the effortlessly thing I was talking about. It bothers me that Sally calls Sonic a traitor when it's blatantly obvious that he's only doing this because Eggman stole his free will. How much of an idiot is she to think anything different? What, does she think he got so angry over his plan being rejected? They started to fight loyally for Eggman? Over a petty grudge? How stupid are they to think he'd do something like that on purpose? 
It's obvious that he's been brainwashed. You'd think that they'd be genre savvy enough at this point to know that. But instead of realizing that, or assuming that, and feeling, feeling sorry for him and worrying about him like they should be, they all just assume he's turned against them as if they never had any faith in him to begin with. Antoine sees his own friend turned into a robot, and the first thing he says is he's gonna court-martial him? Not, oh no, my friend's being brainwashed by Robotnik, we've gotta save him! If anyone's a disloyal traitor here, it's him! This is exactly what I'm talking about. And just like in the Amnesia story, where Sonic's friends are way too quick to just assume Sonic's gonna turn against him and fight loyally for Eggman, just because the writer wants them to. Oh god, this writing is so frustrating. I take too many echidnas over this. At least in those stories, the tone isn't overly depressing. I'm open-minded, but I have my limit. Tails is told that he's not a whole slash hope, but of course that's immediately shut down instead of giving him a moment in the sun when Knuckles to Duke's ex machina comes in. And good thing too, because Tails wouldn't have been able to do anything. Seriously though, how would Knuckles know that this is all happening? Does he have a TV in his house that broadcasts this? Did Sally call him on his cell phone? He hates technology. This is so stupid. It's not like he attacked Angel Island, so why the hell is he here? This is just like in the games where, instead of guarding the Master Emerald, Knuckles just shows up. And after Knuckles gets defeated because he's not a robot, Sally decides to use Operation Last Resort. I'm gonna spoil it because I don't give a shit and I hate this story arc. That operation is using the Neuro Overriders and turning him into a robot. So if she was so okay with doing this, even if that's a last resort, why the hell didn't she just let Sonic do his plan then? If she and her friends hadn't turned his plan down, no matter how risky it was, things wouldn't have turned out like this. They have no one to blame but themselves. And Fang, but not even Fang, because if they had just said yes, Sonic would have had a neural overrider in him when Fang would have showed up. Idiots! Not to mention, as a last resort, why the hell didn't she just... Why is Sonic in so much trouble for this? You'd think that they would just accept that he's doing it as a last resort. Why is he in trouble? Why aren't they feeling sorry for him? I'm shocked that Mike Gallagher, the king of lighthearted Sonic at the time, who you think would have taken Sonic the least seriously, wrote a story this fucking dark. I think I've said everything I need to say about it at this point, but I hate it so much that I might reiterate. Sonic had turned into a robot and his friends all turning against him and flying to court-martial him. I wanted to punch Antoine for saying this, instead of having sympathy like real friends would have. It makes the story unbearably dark and depressing and practically torture for me, for me to read. I was reading it as fast as I possibly could while still reading all the dialogue. And it still took me days because I kept wanting to put this piece of shit off. I would rather read any other issue in the comic that took place before this than read this again. Because it's too depressing. It's too frustrating. Sure, it's not rife with plot holes or bad jokes like some other bad issues are. So, depending on your tolerance for depressing tone, you could say that this story is actually pretty well written. But I take those entertaining mistakes in a heartbeat over this nonsense. And no, this isn't because it's a blue hedgehog. You know, that bullshit argument. No, fuck that. It's for the exact opposite reason. It's not because I'm preaching that this franchise should have a goofy, lighthearted tone and nothing but just because the characters don't look like humans and that there's only one proper way this story can be because of it. No, I'm not an elitist. I think that there are a wide variety of acceptable tones as long as it doesn't get this depressing. It's not because I'm not invested. It's because I am. I care about these characters, so I don't want to see them in depressing situations like this. Especially not for three fucking issues! Sally getting turned into a robot temporarily was fine because it was just one issue. And even then, it was hard to watch. Yeah, you can tell I'm not going to look forward to the Metal Sally story arc later on. This story isn't fun. The characters are all unlikable. It's their fault this happened, and yet it's never called out on. And no sympathy is in full swing here. Next up is Mecha Madness, and I'm not looking forward to that, or issue 40, but the sooner I get past those dark fests, the sooner I can get to the comic being fun again.